Yo, what up guys? My name is Freddy, Swift Style, Garcia, and welcome back to the Scratch Crate. All right, so today's episode is definitely the most important episode that I have ever filmed. And that's because today we introduce my personal release, Hand Control. And today in traditional Scratch Crate fashion, I'm gonna show you guys the ins and outs of this record. Like I explained on the previous video, I put a countless amount of hours into this project, and now it's time to show you guys what it's all about. All right, so first things first, this is a 12 inch record. Shout out to all my Portablist homies who've been reaching out, asking if I'll be releasing a seven inch version of this. You might see something like that in the near future, but there's no way that I was gonna have anything but a 12 inch for my first release. So the first thing that we see is the cover and this amazing artwork that was put together by my good homie, Fried Pixels. You might have seen some stuff that we've done together in the past, but this is definitely, by far, our biggest project. And I wanted to make sure that we started out this video giving my homie James, Fried Pixels, a huge shout out for all the amazing work that he put into this project. You know, we started this project a while back, and if you go back far enough on Fried Pixels' Instagram, you can see some of the early renderings of this project. So the original concept or idea that I had was actually based on an old Sega Genesis cover. And the thought was I was gonna base my covers on old video game cartridges or video game box covers and move on throughout the releases. So for instance, this would have been like a Sega Genesis cover. The next one might've been Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64 and so on. But then as I thought about it a little bit more and more, I thought that concept might be a little cheesy down the line and it didn't represent me well. But there was one thing that I knew we had to keep and it was that old school 80s electro robotic vibe. And because I wanted to keep the label's future releases related in some type of way, we decided to design this column up top. So any future release that you see under Scratch Break will definitely have this column up top with the artist name and the title of the release. But obviously that column will change colors on every release to match the artwork. All right, so let's take a look at the back. All right, so the first thing that we see up in this top corner is the new Scratch Break logo. This logo was designed by the homie Sueda. If you don't know Sueda, that's another artist you need to get yourself familiar with. Sueda has done work for companies like Tribal Gear, Osiris, Harley Davidson, and Marvel, just to name a few. Obviously, I have a huge passion for art and design, so it's my pleasure to bring on amazing artists to work with on these projects. All right, so next to the new Scratch Break logo, produced by Swift Style, mastered by Lejad, and artwork by Fried Pixels. We already went over Fried Pixels. Let me talk to you about Lejad. All right, so for those of you who don't know, Lejad is definitely a OG in the Scratch game. He's been working behind the scenes, helping DJs create routines and production and a countless amount of other projects in the Scratch game. I recently put out a video where I was able to visit his studio, cut to one of his new beats, and I was able to sit down and work with him on this and a couple of other projects. Now, when it comes to making a record, there's actually two forms of mastering. There's digital mastering, and there's record mastering. Now, Lejad helped me out with the digital portion of this project. So what I did is I put all of these files together in order the best that I could, sent them to Lejad, and he tweaked them and tuned them, sent them through his analog boards, and sent me back a digital file. And for those of you who have heard any of my previous loopers, then you've probably seen Mastered by Lejad on the bottom. And once I got those digital files back from Lejad, I handed them over to the cutting engineer. And this cutting engineer that I work with is underground and old school and doesn't want his name out there. But because he's from the underground, I can't do anything but respect his wishes. Otherwise, I put his name right up top with the others who've helped me with this project. All right, the rest is pretty simple. We've got a description of side A, 12 ultra pitch skip proof samples, vocal phrases in full fidelity produced in high skipless grooves, the hand control logo, side B, says 12 ultra pitch locked groove beats. Endless drum loops produced in full fidelity. Then I had to add a special thanks to Turntable Training Wax, Cut and Paste Records, and The Vinyl Factory. Speaking of The Vinyl Factory, I got this record pressed in London. And I know that's pretty unheard of for dudes that are coming out of the States, but there's a reason for that. 
Once the wheels started turning on this project, obviously I needed to reach out to a pressing plant that was gonna produce this record for me. And I spent a huge amount of time with local plants, sending emails, on phone calls, sending samples back and forth, trying to find exactly what I was after. But unfortunately, we just couldn't make it happen. And what I was mainly looking for was a lightweight but sturdy record. And after digging through some of my favorite feeling wax, I realized that the answer was right here in front of me. So shout out to Cut and Paste Records for the assist and recommending the Vinyl Factory. All right, so now that we've gone over the artwork and the cover, let's get inside this bad boy. All right, so each record comes inside a black polylined sleeve. And I know what you're probably thinking, yo Swift, is this a test press or what? What's going on? Where's the label? Well, actually, because this record has a very specific layout, I decided to include each and every record with their own sticker marker. So now you can either rock that test press look that everybody wants, or have your record perfectly marked right out of the gate. I'm pretty sure this is a first. All right, so let's put this to the side for now. Now side B has the new Scratch Break logo. There she is. All right, so enough talking about this record. It's time to show you guys what's up. All right, so now that we have our turntable set up, the very first thing I wanna do is walk you through how to properly mark this record. Now most of you guys have put on a record label before and there's nothing new to this. I just wanna make sure you guys are putting the marker at the correct spot. So the first thing that we wanna do is put the needle on the record and we're gonna wait until we hear the first word, which is hit. That's it right there. This record was designed with the sample starting at the 12 o'clock marker. Double check to make sure we haven't lost our spot. And there we have it, our record is properly marked. And the reason I wanted to walk you through this is because a lot of traditional records start their marker with the ah sound, but in this case, it starts with the words. Now we do have an ah sound on this first track, but it doesn't land at 12 o'clock. And as you can see, all of our samples line up. All right, so let's go ahead and take a listen to this record. Like I said earlier, this is an ultra pitch record, so obviously your samples are going to be sped up. This record is designed at 133.33 BPM. Could you with the shit make you feel it all? Could you with the shit make you feel it all? Let's move on to the next one. Hit my people love with the flow that be fresh. Hit my people love with the flow that be fresh. Let me introduce you to the one. Uh, let me introduce you to the one. Uh, that's the eight well, so that you can tell. All right, so this is where it starts to get interesting. Like I said earlier, all these samples start at the 12 o'clock mark. The 12 o'clock marker actually lands on the second syllable of that first word. So if you're dropping this with a beat, you're obviously gonna start here. That's the eight well, so that you can tell. But because I wanted to complete that loop, I went ahead and added the first part of that word on this sentence. <laughs> And that same thing happens on these next few loops. Rock the raw shit. Yeah. I rock the raw shit. Yeah. You can tell I've got I at the beginning, which is before that 12 o'clock mark. Rock the raw shit. Same thing with the next one. This one actually goes a little bit further back. Break the fella down like ha, yeah. I can break the fella down like ha, yeah. I can. So this particular loop fills all eight sections of the record layout. Let me show you. Break the fella fella down like like ha, ha, yeah. I can break break the fella down like ha, yeah. I can break the fella down like ha, yeah. I can break. You can get some really interesting patterns with that kind of layout. So obviously the beginning of each sentence starts at 12 o'clock, but you'll find some key points at three, six, and nine as well. This sample following the last also has eight points set up. Bust that groove! Say what? Go rockin' it! Now I could have followed that style or layout throughout the whole record, but I really wanted this to be about style and flow. That goes a killer scene and cut like a guillotine. This one's interesting because we've all heard this. Cut like a guillotine. 
but not a lot of us have heard the beginning of that sentence, which is, that was a killer scene. I'm really interested to see what you guys are gonna do with that one. Y'all can stop me now. Uh. What y'all wanna do? Y'all can stop me now. Uh. What y'all wanna do? Pay attention as I get down. Bust it. Pay attention as I get down. Bust it. I don't play when it comes to my cut. All right, so here's another interesting one. So this sample actually starts with the kick drum. And that once again comes in at the 12 o'clock marker. So if you're counting with the beat, that is definitely gonna be on the one. I don't play when it comes to my cut. And I couldn't do away with that kick because the way this pattern lands. And at the end of that rotation, I don't play when it comes to my cut. I had a blank spot. And my homie Richie Roughtone said, why don't you just throw a snare in there so drummers can drum. So now not only do you have a dope sentence, but you have a kick and a snare that you can practice your drumming with. Now I'm not a drummer, so I'm not gonna attempt to embarrass myself. All right, and last but not least. Why is it got to be so damn tough? So why is it got to be so damn tough? So and that's actually one of my favorite scratch sentences of all time. So I had to make sure that we fit it on this record. And there's one more thing that's actually hidden on this side. If you go to the very end in the blank spot and roll back, you have a negative 50 uh, and fresh. That way you can easily access your on uh, fresh. And being at negative 50, you can do some crazy things with that. All right, so that's side A. Let's go ahead and move on to side B. All right, so before we get started, let me explain a little bit more about this side. So what we have here are 12 ultra pitched locked groove beats. And each of these beats have a sweet spot as they were designed to run from 133.33 BPM at quartz lock all the way down to negative 50 at 70 BPM. Now the interesting thing is just like a looper, you can play with the tempo or BPM and change these beats up completely. But being locked groove means that these beats won't run into the next track until you actually pick up the needle and move it. We put a lot of thought and time into designing this layout, but honestly, without an OG engineer who absolutely knows their business, this is very hard to pull off. Now, most records have a locked groove at the very end to keep your needle from skating over the label. And typically, when the cutting engineer is working the lathe on your lacquer, it's a single cut from the beginning to the end without stopping rotation. So this cutting engineer had to create 12 endpoints and manually pick up the cutting head throughout the initial cut with no room for mistakes. But the idea is to be able to drop the needle on a particular track and practice to that beat at different BPMs or tempos for as long as you want. Now Locked Groove isn't a new breakthrough or anything, but I definitely know this is the first of its kind with the different BPMs. All right, so starting with beat one, let's go through these. Like I said, this one was designed at Quartz Locked. Now pretty soon you're gonna hear that lock kick in. There it is. There you have it, just like that. This beat will not end until we pick up that needle and go to the next track. Let's have a listen to the next one. Now, like I said, I designed these from 133 with the first track all the way down to 70 BPM. So as we go down, I'm gonna lower the pitch. That one's already locked. Like I said, you can get creative with these and change it up completely. There's the lock. Perfect rotation.
wish the luck. <clears throat> And last but not least. So this one's all the way at negative 50 on your ultra pitch turntable. If you listen to this one at quartz lock, it's gonna sound a little funny. Check out how this ends. Skates all the way to the label, keeps a rotation. So there you have it. That is hand control. I hope you guys enjoy <laughs> and appreciate all the work that went into making this record. I'm definitely excited to see what you guys are doing with yours. And the reason I mentioned you might want to get two copies is obviously you can do some beat juggling stuff, but you would want to have one of these records on one turntable, playing the beats and cutting on the other. If you have two turntables set up, as long as you have your beat on one side and your samples on the other, and you have the pitch matching on both tables, they're gonna sound amazing together. And for those of you who stuck around to the very end of this video, I've got a surprise contest for you. Check it out. All right, so in traditional scratch crate fashion, I have a giveaway for you guys, but not just any giveaway. This is my last test press of hand control. So in order to enter the drawing to win this test press, all I need you to do is to go to Instagram. Obviously, you need to be following me and repost this picture. So obviously, that's the picture that's gonna link people to come check this video out. All I need you to do is simply repost it. Make sure the hashtag hand control is in your post. That's how I'm gonna track all the entries. The contest will be worldwide, so it doesn't matter where you live. No purchase necessary. Just repost that picture. Make sure that hashtag is in your post. And that's it. If you haven't checked it out already, you can find this record and some other accessories from Scratch Break at scratchbreak.com. There's gonna be a link down below. Hit that up. By the way, on the bottom of that website, there's a message icon. You can reach me there 24 seven if you have any questions or just wanna say what's up. So yeah, that's it for today. Keep scratching. Peace. Yeah.